Hey everybody, it's Dr. Rick Wallace here dropping in on you. I uh, hope everybody is having a great week, week to this point. Look, I'm going to jump right in because I have something to say and I don't have a whole lot of time uh, to say it in. Uh, you know the routine. Uh, we do work in the community, have been doing work in the community for multiple decades. If you believe in the work we're doing from our research on to uh, our think tank through the work we do with young black boys, young black girls, and black families. Uh, black men lead it, especially the Rite of Passage program for young black males. Show some love and show some support. The link to support what we do is in the description box of this video. On that note, as I observe and I sit back, uh, those of you who have been subscribers on my channel, this one and the one that preceded it, uh, if you followed me, uh, my writings, if you've read any of my books, you understand that I'm here for one purpose uh, in the black community, is to find paths to empowerment, to identify problems and develop solutions. It was the way I was reared, it's the way that I've reared my children. It's the way that I run my businesses. It is how I function. It makes absolutely no sense to complain. It makes no sense to whine. It makes no sense to point fingers and all of this other stuff. What happens is you identify what's on, going on. You gain an understanding of why it's happening and what you can do to stop it if it's not something you want. If there's something you desire, you determine what it takes to get it and then you execute the plan. You create protocols to determine how you move and act in certain situations to take emotions out of the equation and you move from there. I have addressed issues from uh, the disintegration of the black family, the miseducation of black youth, which was actually my 16th book out of 25. I've uh, addressed uh, collective uh, psychosis. I have addressed uh, African-American adolescent young adult male violence, intimate partner homicide. I have addressed um, uh, the, the school to prison pipeline and I've come with solutions and all of that. Um, our programs have proven to work, yet we get very little support. And I'm saying that because I'm watching how we're responding to this whole Kanye thing, regardless to what side of the argument you're on. Uh, for those who think he's a genius and for those who think he's stupid. The bottom line is we have the vast majority of blacks, and I mean the vast majority, uh, a very small percentage can relate uh, to what's going on on that level. And they aren't the ones online and, and um, debating it, discussing it, uh, pretending to understand and know things that they don't. Uh, here's my problem. While we are debating how stupid Kanye is or how much of a genius he is and what's going on between him and uh, a specific group that he has obviously ticked off now some are questioning whether he did it on purpose whether that was a way to expedite his exit from certain contracts that he had already expressed displeasure in and all that it actually is a moot point because at the end of the day no matter what direction this thing takes the issues within the black community are going to be the same we tend to always get caught up and distracted in things that don't bring anything. The one thing that I can take out of this whole thing is that um, the Jewish community showed you what power really is. When blacks got mad because Kanye said slavery was a choice, we threw temper tantrums. Absolutely nothing happened except he got more well. He became more wealthier. He insulted the Jewish community even whether the insult is valid or not is irrelevant they felt insulted and immediately reduced his wealth i mean within a week now whether it should be done and all that stuff that's debated on either side depending on what side of the argument i'm not here to be on the side of i'm here to talk about what's going on in your community the fact that our sons are killing each other the fact that our sons are killing our daughters the fact that our sons are wreaking havoc within our community 
and that our sons and our daughters are killing themselves. When I say themselves, I mean suicide. I mean, the rates are higher. I mean, we're peaking. We even have, for the first time, and I don't know how long, the last few years, little, little black girls between the age of 5 and 13 lead in the suicide, successful suicide rate. Little black girls, 5 to 13. That's a reality. That's going on in our community. That's going on under our watch. I sounded the clarion on this more than 20 years ago. I've been consistently talking about it for the last 12 to 13 years. I have written on it, I have lectured on it, I have talked about it, and you get plenty of likes, you get pats on the back. I don't need any of that. What I need is people to understand that if we don't do something, and I mean quick, we're gonna find another generation lost. That means another generation that comes from us will not have the proper underpinnings, the proper foundation to stand up and walk in power. We keep talking about black empowerment, but we talk about it in in in, in an ineffective, in an in unengaged manner. It's just something to talk about. It's something to debate. We love to have intellectual sparring sessions about what's possible. And we get into these discussions and nobody is sitting down and saying, okay, what does the data say? What can we do? And the one thing that anybody will tell you, if you want to uh, improve the performance of young black males, socialize them. Why? Because that works across the board with any group. Every group has to socialize their children. When it comes to black children, we also have to racially socialize ours because everything that happens outside of our community is antithetical to what we're trying to in, superimpose into their psyche. So we have to in, reinforce that with an understanding of what's going on and what happens in that, it, in that situation. So with that being said, look, I am going to challenge you to show some love, show some support, but also get involved. Develop an understanding of what's going on. Develop an understanding of how things work. One of the reasons we lose consistently is because we don't understand how things work. We are constantly being misled, misdirected, distracted. Uh, we constantly get caught up in things that don't have a direct influence on us while the things that do go unanswered, unaddressed, we have issues that we have the capacity to address. There should not be the heightened level of violence in our community, but it is, and we are acting helpless. We, we're sitting down commenting, shaking my head, oh my God, when we can actually be engaged. Uh, I've shown you over and over again the work. I've shown you in real life cases that when you socialize young black males, you reduce their proclivity towards violence. You reduce their... Um, dropout rate, you reduce their uh, frequency or risk of becoming incarcerated. Uh, you also increase their risk, that uh, increase their chance of becoming pro-social, pro-productive uh, within the community, uh, business owners, uh, family men, all of that from the proper socialization. That's what Rites of Passage uh, is doing in other areas, other groups. They understand who they are. They have defined manhood in their group. They are socializing their young males into manhood, and they know what's expected of them when they reach uh, adulthood and they are integrated slowly once they turn a certain age and they have their celebration they are integrated slowly into the responsibilities of manhood we're not doing that on a local level we're not doing it on a community level we're definitely not doing it on a national level and we need a universal understanding and, and definition of what manhood is so that we have a universal understanding of what we're aspiring to so that we can hold one another accountable we need black men to step into these places these roles these situations and I am challenging everyone to give, to support what we're doing, uh, to become involved in what we're doing. I'm challenging you that we cannot sit and consistently do what we've been doing and expect something different. It's time for us to get ourselves together. It's time for us to stand up and make a difference in the community. We have the power. It's time to stop playing helpless. It's time to stop playing the victim. It's time to stop pointing the finger and it's time to start taking action. 
they love the way we walk around and play blame. As long as we're playing the blame game, they understand we don't realize we have the power to change it. And they consistently feed us crap. And the problem is they're flooding our communities with trash and poison through music, through uh, apps on their phones, through other media methods. They're pumping poison in there. And that poison is toxifying their minds, their brains, their aspirations, their idea of what is. And they are acting it out in real time. And we are sitting around and doing absolutely nothing about it when the answer is in front of us. That's it. I'm done. Uh, but I am challenging you. You watch this video. Show some love. Show support. The link is in the description box. The organization's cash app uh, account handle is in the description box. Let's do something to change the situation. On that note, I'm going to get out of here. You guys have an unbelievable remainder of your day. I need to unwind. It's been one of those days. I'm out.